Since fifth grade, I participated in many interesting seminars that would always have a theme of analyzing a certain disease. And then, um, a certain disease. And then, have a follow-up presentation. Each year, the presenters slash researchers use the language R to analyze the certain DNA sequences and discover the change related to the disease. I was very impressed how the computer could do all this and very interested to learn more about the language R. In one of the seminars, there was a competition for balancing the energy of a cell by doing certain activities, and I was able to win a Starbucks gift card. Now, as soon as I came back home, my sister kindly asked for it. Just kidding, she just took it without telling me. But, good thing I don't drink coffee. At the end of sixth grade, the organizer of the whole seminar invited me to try out for a camp called R Camp. I was very honored and I went there very enthusiastic to learn more about the language R. It was surely a rewarding experience. Now let's talk about DNA and RNA. DNA is a long molecule, like a chain, where the links of the chain are called nucleotides, also known as bases. There are four different nucleotides in a cell, and they're re represented in four different letters, A, G, C, and T. These four letters are all that's needed to write out our entire body plan, kind of like a blueprint. Sounds too simple? Keep in mind that Morse code only uses two symbols, short and long tones. And with that simple code, you can write out entire cyclopedias. OK, now here's the alphabet of Morse code. Now I'm going to play a sound and try to figure out what it means. OK, now I'm going to play it one more time. And if you don't get it, it's fine. OK, now what did you guys get? Shout out your answer. OK. Well, the answer was TEDx is awesome. OK. So now let's continue to talk about the structure of the DNA molecule, which is called the double helix. The double helix describes the appearance of the double-stranded DNA, which is composed of two linear strands that run opposite of each other, or anti-parallel, and twist together, kind of like a spiral staircase. Each DNA strand within the double helix is long and linear, uh, each containing nucleotides. OK. Now, let's um, so DNA is stored and used in a cell after it's been synthesized during replication. DNA transcription is the process in which DNA is copied into RNA. Another way to call this is RNA synthesis. RNA is one of the three major macromolecules. Now, what is a macromolecule? Well, it's a molecule containing a large number of atoms such as nucleic acid, synthetic polymer, and proteins. Macromolecules are essential for ongoing life in the world, as well as DNA and proteins. A central tenet of molecular biology states that the flow of genetic information through a cell is through DNA to RNA to protein. Or an easy way to remember it, DNA makes RNA makes protein. Proteins are the workhouse of a cell. They play leading roles as enzymes and as structural components. Cells make up all the living things in the world, such as people, plants, animals, etc. So now let's go into a little more detail on the statistical language R. R is a programming language that you do data analysis with by writing scripts and functions. R is complete and interactive, designed by statisticians for statisticians. The statistical language R has, contains operators and functions that make the process of exploring, modeling, and visualizing data a natural one. Complete data analysis can be written in just a few lines of code. It's a covenant data analysis tool. Now, here's one of the first programs I did, and it's a program that makes a graph. OK, now here's the basic program. And now I'm going to go into a little more detail on that a little later. OK. As you can see here, there are two different graphs. Now, did I use the same program or not? Tell me what you guys think. <laughs> I actually did. Did you, did you understand the program I just showed you? Well, don't worry if you didn't. I'll break it down into units. 
The first part of the program tells us the numbers has to be for a graph one through four. The next part represents the letters that are numbers from one through four. Then, this is the part of the code that randomizes the numbers from each group. And finally, this is the part of the program that creates the graph. Also, if you haven't noticed or thought your eyes were tricking you, yes, that does say Bananarama Ding Dong. That day at camp was certainly an interesting one. Now, let's talk about computational. Uh, right. So since we're analyzing DNA and RNA with R, we can say that we're working on computational biology. Now, what is computational biology? Computational biology, sometimes referred to bioinformatics, is a science of using biological data to develop algorithms and functions al along with various biological systems. Prior to computational biology, biologists were unable to access large amounts of data, but researchers were able to develop analytical methods for interpreting the data, but had a hard time sharing it among colleagues. R is an interdisciplinary science that uses computers to store and um, also process biological data. In the camp, we had daily training on R to understand it sufficiently and how it related to computational biology. Throughout the duration of the whole camp, my group members and I became really good friends, getting to a point where to this day we're still in contact with each other because we had a lot in common and worked together perfectly. Possibly make, putting our differences aside made it much more fun to get to know each other. Now, our final project was literally the most stressful thing ever because we only had three hours to complete it. At first, three hours might seem like a lot of time, but if you step in our shoes, three hours was literally insane because we weren't doing very simplistic tasks. We were doing, we were assigned a certain disease, which was called renal kidney cancer. Now, the interesting part about it, this was that we actually had to use real data, numerical and biological, which was more fun and interesting. So it's important to, to detect kidney cancer early. The five-year survival rate for stage one kidney cancer is 81%, while the five-year survival rate for stage four kidney cancer is only 8%. Obviously, as the stages get higher, you are less likely to survive. In our study, we used 100 microRNA samples, uh, 100 samples in total, consisting of 50 control samples and 50 can uh, cancer samples, each containing 886 microRNAs. Now, you may be wondering, how does R detect all this? Well, it, we put it into a, a sequence analysis program that we wrote in R, and it finds the difference between the two data sets. So, now, how R does it is that it looks between the letters and then finds the difference between the letters by using a t-test. Okay, now here's the program that we wrote in R for the t-test and a bunch of other stuff. The first part of the program tells us where the program is gonna be saved. Then, this is the part of the program that inputs the data into a scatter plot. After that, this is the part of the program that actually, that actually makes the t-test of the data we inputted. And finally, the last part of the program tells us, um, it makes the different genes. A t-test estimates how significant the difference between the two data sets is. Okay, so this whole, like, so at the end of our experiment, we discovered 55 genes that were significantly different from each other. And now, you might ask, how is this important? Well, these 55 genes may help for early detection of kidney cancer. This whole experience was a fun and interesting journey, filled with lots of problems and statistics. I hope you all try this programming language at some point, because it's really helpful and it's used in the real world for modern medicine and much more. If we didn't have R, we could have trouble processing large amounts of data quickly and efficiently, which would make life a lot harder. Thanks to Dr. Yi Hang Lee and MyCore for inspiring me to this TEDx talk. Thanks for watching.